iOS 14 has brought about some interesting updates, some of which the Android Master Race has had for years. Regardless of these updates, they have changed the way I use my iPhone, so today we're going to be taking a look at what's on my iPhone. The phone itself is the iPhone X. I haven't found the need to upgrade since the latest iPhone uses the same OLED display and the A11 processor is plenty fast for what I use it for. The phone is of course running iOS 14 which I have been using since the initial release of the developer beta. To take advantage of the OLED screen, I have been using one of the new wallpapers that come with iOS 14. I use the abstract monochrome wallpaper that changes periodically. Since OLED screens don't use a solid backlight, darker wallpapers can help extend battery life. On my home screen, I have a single medium-sized widget, 12 of my most used apps, and the bottom navigation bar. We'll start with the most obvious update to iOS 14, widgets. My widget of choice for the home screen is the weather app. Using the widget in its medium size, you can see the day at a glance. So for places like here in California, where it's cold in the morning but warmer in the day, you can more accurately plan your day. Now, while all of this info is nice, the true reason why I use this app on the home screen is to shift all of my apps downwards. By shifting all of the apps, it moves them into the sweet spot where my thumb can easily reach every single app. This has eliminated the uncomfortable reach for apps in the upper left corner, and it has reduced the amount of times I drop my phone since I no longer need to change my grip when reaching for these apps. Now for the apps themselves, we have one password. If you haven't tried using a password manager before, I'd highly recommend it. Everything these days requires some form of login and the password requirements just keep getting more and more complex. Having a centralized encrypted database with all your username and passwords is an easy way to relieve any unnecessary stress from having to juggle all of these unique usernames and passwords. One password does charge a yearly subscription, but it's by far the easiest one to use that also has a really good dedicated desktop app to make going in between your phone and computer that much easier. I have two email apps, Mail and Outlook. I'd prefer to have one email app, but Outlook has too many native features that my work uses that Mail can't make use of. So for now, I have Mail for personal emails and Outlook for all work-related emails. Next is the calendar app, which I just use for the app icon. At a glance, I can see the date and day, which comes in handy from time to time. I rarely ever open this app because I just use Outlook for scheduling, since it already contains my work schedule. My navigation app of choice is Apple Maps. I prefer to use Google Maps, but Apple only allows for first-party apps to integrate into their ecosystem. Since Siri and Links all default to Apple Maps, I decided if I can't beat them to just join them and just use Apple Maps. So right in the middle of the 12 app stack, I have the camera app. I found that this is the area where my thumb naturally defaults to, so I have the camera app there, so if any candid moments appear, I won't miss them. Next to the camera app is my photo editing app of choice, Lightroom. Adobe's Lightroom Cloud app has made massive improvements since it first launched and has become so good that I can't even remember the last time I used the desktop app to edit photos. You can pretty much do everything that you can do on the desktop app, gradients, healing brushes, and individual color adjustments. The mobile version of Lightroom can even edit raw photos. I use this Apple SD card adapter to import photos taken on my a7 III. I love this workflow. I can quickly upload photos onto my phone, then edit anywhere. I don't see myself going back to the desktop app anytime soon. Next, we have the Photos app. I use this app for both pleasure and productivity. Always fun to take a stroll down memory lane, and sometimes it's just easier to explain something to a coworker with a photo. Next is Instagram, self-explanatory, great source for inspiration, but easy to fall into the black hole of endless scrolling. Of course, I have the YouTube app to consume media, but I also use it as a second reference for my videos. According to my YouTube analytics, a majority of my videos are consumed on mobile devices, so I always like to double check color and sound on a mobile device in addition to my laptop. Podcast app of choice is Overcast. I prefer Overcast over the Apple Podcast app because of CarPlay. Overcast CarPlay interface is significantly easier to navigate. 
When using Apple's podcast app, I find that I end up just picking up the phone, which defeats the purpose of CarPlay. The last app on my home screen is Latch. Latch is the most recent addition to my phone. Our current apartment complex only uses electronic keys. To use Latch, you open the app, then hold it next to a latch enabled door. It's very Silicon Valley, but it's nice not having to carry around keys anymore. If you swipe left, I also have Latch on the dedicated widget screen. From the Latch widget, I have quick access to my most used doors and can remotely open them at a distance. This is especially nice if you're on team, this only requires one trip. The bottom navigation bar is in its default configuration, except I swapped out Apple Music for Spotify. If you're curious, here's what I've been listening to lately. I've been playing Natalie Dawn nonstop. Her rendition of Masharia Moore is a killer song to enjoy with your morning coffee. Now if we swipe right, we go straight into another new feature for iOS 14, the App Library. App Library is great to see all your apps at a glance and removes the need for other home screens. This brings us to my favorite feature of iOS 14, the ability to hide home screens. To do this, long press on your home screen. The edit page button will appear right above the bottom navigation bar. Click the button and then you can now select which pages you want to enable or disable. I like to hide the other pages because I still use apps found on these pages, just not on a daily basis. When I do need to access an app that I don't use as often, I'll use iOS's search feature. To quickly do this, I'll swipe down and search for the app. With practice, I find that you can predict the search results and it is a lot faster than scrolling through other screens. Overall, the updates to iOS 14 aren't groundbreaking, but they have made the iPhone a more enjoyable experience. Hopefully you enjoyed this look into what's on my iPhone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.